हाय लर्नर आई एम गुरुदेव सिंह राणा असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर कंप्यूटर आईटी उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हल्द्वानी डिस्ट्रिक्ट नैनीताल सो लर्नर इन दिस लेक्चर यू विल लर्न अबाउट सेशन ट्रैकिंग टेक्निक्स हाउ टू ट्रैक सेशन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट कुकीज हिडन फॉर्म फिल्ड्स यू आर एल रिराइटिंग और क्वेरी स्ट्रिंग लर्नर यू विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड हाउ टू मैनेज सेशन ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन लास्ट लेक्चर यू लर्न अबाउट सेशन कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सेशन एंड वाई वी यूज सेशन एंड हाउ टू यूज सेशन एंड पर्पज ऑफ सेशन यू लर्न अबाउट सेशन ट्रैकिंग एंड अंडरस्टैंड द पर्पज ऑफ सेशन ट्रैकिंग सेशन ट्रैकिंग टेक्निक्स लर्नर इन दिस लाइट यू विल नो अबाउट टाइप ऑफ सेशन ट्रैकिंग टेक्निक्स एज यू नो इन वेब टेक्नोलॉजीज कम्युनिकेशन वी हैव टू पार्ट वन इज क्लाइंट एंड अनदर इज सर्व क्लाइंट इज कंज्यूमर एंड सर्वर इज to fulfill the request sent by client session so we can track session on both side in jsp we can track session on client machine and server machine so there are two type of session tracking techniques one is client side and another is server side client side means we save state or data on client machine and server side mean we are saving state or data on server machine so we can categorize session tracking techniques into two parts one is client side session tracking and another one is server side session tracking client side session tracking includes cookies hidden form fields and url rewriting and server side session tracking include session objects in next slide we will discuss these techniques in details so learner in this slide we will learn about cookies so first question will arise in the mind what is cookies cookies allow user to store information in text files on client machine so here we can say it save state or data in client machine so now question is how and in which scenario we use cookies so we need to understand this first cookies are text file that is stored on client computer and they are kept for various information tracking purpose gsp transparently support http cookies using servlet technology so learner i am going to explain here an example in which scenario we use cookies here in this figure as you, as you can see client send a request to server and server response back create some set of cookies to browser for example user id name age or some other pi data here pi data means personal information browser store these cookies on local machine for further use when the next time the browser send any request to the web server then it sends those cookies information to the server and server uses that information to identify the user or maybe for some other purpose as well so learner we understand the cookies why we use cookies and in which scenario we use cookies so now we will implement the cookies in gsp this is a practical session so i will show how we can create cookies how we read cookies and how we delete cookies so first one is how we set cookies to set cookies in gsp we have three steps first one is create a cookie object after that we set the maximum is or expiry time of the cookies after this time it will get expired automatically 
third is sending the cookies into the http response header now here i am going to discuss how we create cookies object so to create a cookie object first we call the cookie constructor with a cookie name and a cookie value both of which are string type here is syntax to create cookies first is cookies this is a class and then we set a cookies name is equal to new cookies and then we pass key and value in the parameter and here i am creating one cookies that is user id so cookies user id is equal to new cookies and i am setting id as key value and 1 2 3 4 as value now we come to the second step to set maximum is or expiry date here maximum is means after this time cookies automatically get expired and browser cannot use that cookie for further requests this is the case where we don't want persistent cookies below is the syntax how we can set maximum is we use set max is function to specify how long the cookies should be valid the following code will be set up as cookies for 24 hours user id this is a cookie name that we create previously so user id dot set max is and in uh, in parameter i am sending 60 multiply 60 multiply 24 means that 60 second multiply by 60 and into multiply 24 so here user id is cookies name that we declared above and we are using set max is function and here we are setting the time in second here we are going to set up cookies for 24 hours uh, like that we are uh, for 24 uh, four hours i am uh, first multiply by 60 to convert 24 hours into minute and then we multiply 60 to convert minutes into seconds so after 24 hours it will expire automatically and get deleted from match now the third step and last step in sending the cookies into the http response response header this last step to set up the cookies we use response dot add cookies method to add cookies in response header below is the syntax how to add cookies in response header response dot add cookie and uh, and we pass user id as parameter here there uh, here user id is cookie name and which we declare in previous example so this is the part where we learned how to set cookies now in the in this slide we learn how to read and delete cookies to read cookies we need to create an array of cookies object by calling get cookies method of http servlet request after getting array of cookies we can use for loop to read individual cookies or we can say we iterate the array of cookies uh, here is example here is some code snippet cookies a type of array cookies list is equal to request dot get cookies this will return cookies list in uh, in array format in the above example we get cookies method to will return list of cookies as an array here request is object of http serverless request class so below is the code how to read individual cookies from array here we are using for loop to iterate the array for i am setting one uh, variable i and i is equal to 0 and i less than cookies dot length and i plus plus that is incrementing the value every time so cookies is equal to cookies cookies what is cookie here cookie is an uh, variable that are getting uh, that are uh, getting the cookie object from the list of cookies and we are getting out dot print name and cookies dot get name and out dot print value is equal to cookies dot 
get value so this example will print the cookies name and their value in the browser now in next slide we will learn how to delete cookies so to delete cookies we need to follow below three steps first we need to identify the cookie and store that cookie in cookie object so here simply we read cookies how to read cookies we already learned in previous slide so now second step is important to set to delete the cookies why this important because we are doing main work here to delete the cookies so in this step we set the max is equal to 0 by using set maxes function in previous slide we already used set maxes function we can take reference from there now the third step we add that cookies back to the response header as we done already in previous slide so delete cookies means not to delete it from system but we expire the cookies and make it unusable now we will uh, learn about advantage of the cookies and what is the disadvantage of the cookies so first first one is advantage of cookies once we store the cookies it is available for all the pages it is lightweighted so performance of site will be increased but there is one disadvantage that is there are some uh, disadvantage of the cookies so first one is if user disable the cookies then our application will not work so every time when we use cookies we must enable the cookies from the system for security reason we cannot use cookies cookies are unable to handle the complex data or large data like object data and some other uh, list data we can't use cookies for that now in this slide we will learn about url rewriting first we need to understand what is url rewriting url rewriting means to append some meaningful value in url in url rewriting we append some identifiers to the url of next resource or page we pass these identifiers as name value pairs below is the syntax of url rewriting url question mark key 1 is equal to value ampersand key 2 is equal to value 2 da, 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 so on here url is url of next page advantage of url rewriting url rewriting method is useful even if the user has disabled the cookies this was disadvantage of uh, cookies so here it become the advantage of uh, url rewriting url rewriting techniques is independent of the browser now there are some disadvantages of the uh, url rewriting the client need to append the session id and regenerate the url with each request and the client need to keep track of the unique uh, id until the conversation between uh, the client and server ends in this slide we will learn about hidden form fields first we need to understand what is hidden fields well hidden field means hidden or invisible text field we use hidden field to save state of users in web technology we store value in hidden fields and get its value from other another servlet we use this approach where we need to submit form in all the pages and don't want to depend on the browser below is the code snippet for hidden fields to save state of user input type type is equal to hidden name uh, i am setting id value is equal to 1 2 3 4 input type hidden name username and value is equal to gsr so in above code we create two hidden fields which name are id 
and username header field our input type which uh, which type is hidden hidden fields are read only type in browser basically hidden form fields are also used to maintain session hidden form fields are html input fields input type is equal to hidden name is equal to session name and value is equal to session value hidden fields is embedded with submit button we'll use the example to print the value of hidden fields in gsp so you can see the example here is form action is equal to print.gsp method is equal to post uh, and then there are two uh, hidden fields one is uh, name and another is id and there is also one submit button which uh, value is go when you click on go it will redirect to the print.gsp page so action attribute is used for page handling here we are handling the print.gsp page the form handler is typically a file on server with containing some code for processing input data text box for username hidden field used to save some value that you want when we click on save button page will redirect to the print.gsp page as we said previously print.gsp page contain some code to print the value of hidden fields in user browser we we'll use the code in print.gsp file to print the value of hidden field so here uh, this is the code in uh, print.gsp file where we are using out.println and request.get parameters and uh, there is a parameter height and height is name of hidden field there are some disadvantages of hidden form fields first one is hidden fields is only maintained at server side so it takes some time to read second one is extra code is required to post the data of hidden field and third one is that in in hidden fields we can pass textual data only and cannot pass object or reference type data now in this slide we will learn about session object session object is object of http session class it is part of javax.servlet.http package session object is valid until the user session is alive in gsp session tracking is always enabled by default and for every client a new http session object is instantiated automatically so we can say gsp session as implicit object as you know session object is used to transfer data between multiple forms now here we will know how we use session in gsp so we need to understand some common use method of session object a string get id this return a string value which is unique identifier assigned to the current session and boolean is new as per name this method is used to check either the session is new or not it return always boolean value because its return type is boolean void set attributes in parameter string name comma object value we use this method when we want save some data or value in session here name is identifier and value is data that we want to save in session here value is object type we can save reference type data in session so it will return nothing but it will set the session object get attribute string name so this method is used to read the value from session and this will return value specified identifier method mentioned in parameter remove attribute string and name 
This method remove the session object bound with specified name from this session. So learner, these were some common methods that we use in session tracking. Now I will show some practical session how to implement session object in GSP. So in this slide, we will see the session tracking example. Now here I am using Eclipse as an editing tool. So first open Eclipse ID. Then we go to the file menu. Then we click on new. And after that, we will get a list of project. So we'll, we will select dynamic web project. After selecting the dynamic web project, a new window will pop up for project. Here, we will fill all the mandatory fields like project name and we need to select target machine. And after this, select dynamic web module version. We will configure for Tomcat server. We can modify the configuration as well. And after that, we can click on finish. After clicking on finish, it will display project structure as we see below. below. Now, we need to add new GSP page here. So we need to right click on project name as demo. Click on new, new button and select GSP page. So this is the structure of GSP page. In uh, first thing, we are importing the libraries we need for uh, web technologies or dynamic web pages. So we are importing java.io and java.util. Now here is some uh, server side code, like we are using a date object DT to track the creation time of session. And now I'm using an integer count value, which, uh, which we are using to count how many time we hit the browser or application. And one is string user ID. This is string type and I'm setting uh, Gurudev Rana as string ID, user ID here. I am checking if session is new. So I'm using if, uh, uh, if, and if session ID is equal to new, if session is new, then we are setting user ID as Gurudev Rana. And uh, if it is not uh, new, then we are incrementing the count and we are fetching the user ID from the session. This is the HTML page, which is, uh, we are using to display the content in web browser. As you know, uh, I think uh, you everyone know about uh, HTML and uh, how to display HTML and what tag we are using for HTML. So here is nothing. So it is just uh, to uh, display the value in web browser. So HTML add we are session using session tracking and uh, we are getting session info and number of visits here. Okay. So now in this HTML page, we are displaying the current content in the browser. After running this program uh, that we mentioned in the below page, it will display in the browser, it display username and number of visit. So here we are uh, storing previous value of uh, visit, how many visit do we have done previously and then we are going to increment value by one. So this is the output after running uh, this project. So this will be output. Here is user ID is equal to Gurudevrana and number of visit equal to five. So learner, what will be the outcome of this lecture? So learning outcome of this lecture is to understand the what is session and why we use session advantage and disadvantage of all session tracking techniques and finally we understand understand how to implement session tracking in gsp in next lecture you will learn about java server page with jdbc how to connect 
Java pages with database and how to install MySQL and step to run GSP using Tomcat server. Thank you.